Throughout history, humans have displayed a deep fascination with the universe. With its array of celestial bodies, the night sky has been the object of curiosity for ages. People have looked up at the heavens with questions about their place in existence and the universe itself. How far away are the stars and how many are there? Why does the moon change shape? How do eclipses work exactly? Fortunately, astronomers have been present across several civilizations to provide answers to some of these pressing questions. The ancient Mesopotamians, Egyptians, and Greeks had varying astronomical postulations, which also varied in degree of accuracy. Regardless, many of their ideas were stepping stones for our now prevalent theories about the universe. One of the biggest contributors to humanity's understanding of the cosmos was Claudius Ptolemy, also simply known as Ptolemy. Ptolemy was a mathematician, astronomer, and geographer whose model of the solar system was the standard for over 1,200 years. NASA describes him as the epitome of knowledge of Grecian astronomy. Ptolemy's model eventually turned out to be wrong, but before we unpack that, let's take a quick look at his background. The details of Ptolemy's life remain somewhat mysterious. According to 14th century astronomer Theodore Melitaniotes, Ptolemy was born Ptolemais Hermiu, a Greek city in the Thebaid region of Egypt now El Mansha, Sohai Governorate. However, there is no evidence in support of this claim. Going by his name, Claudius Ptolemy, doesn't exactly yield conclusive results either, as the name is a blend of cultures. Indeed, Ptolemy is Greco-Egyptian, while his first name, Claudius, is Latin, leading some to believe he was a citizen of Rome. Ptolemy probably descended from a Greek family residing in Egypt, and his Roman citizenship was likely a gift from a Roman emperor to one of his ancestors. It is known that Ptolemy lived in the city of Alexandria, an Egyptian province under the rule of the Roman Empire. Roughly 400 years before Ptolemy was born, the city was founded by Alexander the Great. Under Greek rulership, it became home to a famous library that drew many scholars from Greece. Alexandria also had a prestigious school for astronomers, which received generous support from the ruling class. In Ptolemy's time, though, Alexandria had become part of the Roman Empire and was a major source of grain for Rome. Scientific research wasn't a top priority, and funding for astronomy and other studies had dropped. Regardless, residing in the city between 121 and 141 CE, Ptolemy established a reputation as the most significant astronomer of Roman Alexandria. Among Ptolemy's contributions to astronomy, his geocentric model of the universe was the greatest and most important. Claudius Ptolemy had thoroughly pored over the work of the astronomers who came before him and studied the methods they had used to observe and measure objects in the night sky using the naked eye. Using 800 years worth of this data alongside his understanding of mathematics, he developed his geocentric model of the universe, which he outlined in his book He Mathematiques Syntaxes the Mathematical Collection. Ptolemy's work, translated from its original Greek title into the now popular Arabic and Latin fusion title, the Almagest, was a comprehensive synthesis of astronomical knowledge up to Ptolemy's time. It featured 13 books covering the following subjects celestial motion, the stars, the sun, the moon, and planetary theory. In his most famous work, Ptolemy proposed that the Earth was at the center of the cosmos, with all celestial bodies, including the sun, moon, planets, and stars, orbiting around it. In the opening chapters of Almagest, Ptolemy presents empirical arguments for his cosmological framework. According to Ptolemy, Earth is a stationary sphere positioned at the center of a vastly larger celestial sphere. This celestial sphere rotates at a perfectly uniform rate around Earth, carrying with it the stars, planets, sun, and moon. This rotation accounts for the daily risings and settings of these celestial bodies. One of Ptolemy's fundamental observations was the Sun's apparent movement along a great circle known as the ecliptic over a year. The ecliptic is a fixed path against the rotation of the celestial sphere. Ptolemy also observed similar movements for the Moon and planets, which appeared to travel backward, earning them the name wandering stars in contrast to the fixed stars found in the ecliptic. Central to Ptolemy's cosmological model is the assumption that the apparently irregular movements of the heavenly bodies are, in reality, combinations of regular uniform circular motions. Ptolemy's theory posited that each celestial body moved in a series of epicycles, or small circular orbits, as it traveled along its larger circular orbit around Earth. By combining these epicycles, Ptolemy could accurately predict the observed positions of the celestial bodies in the night sky. Eventually, the geocentric model was discredited by proponents of heliocentrism, such as Aristarchus of Samos and later Copernicus. Heliocentrists argued that it made more sense for the Sun to be at the center of the solar system, with the Earth and other planets orbiting around it. Additionally, in his book The Crime of Claudius Ptolemy Robert Newton argues that despite Ptolemy's astronomical skill, 
he was, in fact, an astronomical fraud. Some of Ptolemy's observations are remarkably accurate, leading Newton to argue that they could not have been made with the instruments available to Ptolemy. On the other hand, some of Ptolemy's observations are highly error-prone. For instance, his measurement of the autumn equinox in AD 132 was off by more than a day. Newton asserts that Ptolemy manipulated his observations to fit his theories rather than the other way around, often adapting observations made centuries before his time. According to Newton, all of Ptolemy's observations that can be tested are fabricated, and his theories rely heavily, if not entirely, on fabricated data. In addition to the monumental Almagest Claudius, Ptolemy also contributed to a variety of other fields, including mathematics, geography, and astrology. Another of Ptolemy's notable works is Tetrabiblus, a treatise on astrology that remains influential today. In Tetrabiblus, Ptolemy explores the principles of astrology and the influence of celestial bodies on human affairs. He outlines methods for interpreting astrological charts and predicting future events based on the positions of the stars and planets. While it may seem odd that a scientist like Ptolemy should pay any mind to a discipline like astrology, Ptolemy described the Tetrabiblus as a companion work to the Almagest. The Almagest dedicates the positions of the heavenly bodies while his book on astrology sheds light on how these heavenly bodies play into human lives. Claudius Ptolemy's work in geography can be summed up in his eight-volume work titled Geography. In the first volume of Geography, Ptolemy addressed the challenges of representing a spherical Earth on a flat map. He discussed map projections and introduced the concept of latitude and longitude, becoming the first to create a grid system for mapping the entire planet. The next six volumes of geography served as a comprehensive gazetteer, listing around 8,000 place names from around the world. Ptolemy's collection of place names and their coordinates provided valuable insight into the geographic knowledge of the Roman Empire in the second century. The final volume of geography contained Ptolemy's atlas, featuring maps that utilized his grid system and the cartographic convention of placing north at the top of the map, which Ptolemy established. However, Ptolemy's gazetteer and maps contained numerous errors, primarily due to the reliance on the best estimates of merchant travelers, who lacked accurate means of measuring longitude at the time. Although Ptolemy's work was lost for over a millennium after its initial publication, it was rediscovered in the early 15th century and translated into Latin. Geography quickly gained popularity, with over 40 editions printed from the 15th through 16th centuries. However, the widespread popularity of Ptolemy's work also led to the proliferation of unscrupulous cartographers in the Middle Ages, who printed atlases with Ptolemy's name to lend credibility to their books. Ptolemy's faulty assumption of a short circumference of the Earth had far-reaching consequences. It influenced Christopher Columbus's belief that he could reach Asia by sailing west from Europe. Additionally, Ptolemy's depiction of the Indian Ocean as a large inland sea, bordered by terra incognita to the south, fueled speculation about a large southern continent, sparking countless expeditions. Ptolemy's mathematical contributions were also remarkable, especially in trigonometry. He created the earliest surviving trigonometric table, which listed the lengths of chords in a circle. Plus, he applied some fundamental theorems of spherical trigonometry to solve basic astronomical problems. Despite the errors in his work and the eventual discrediting of his geocentric model, Ptolemy's legacy endures. His influence on the development of astronomy, geography, and mathematics reverberates through the centuries, serving as a testament to his enduring impact on the history of science. As Ptolemy himself expressed in a personal poem inserted into the Almagest, his pursuit of knowledge allowed him to transcend mortal limitations and touch the realm of the divine. Well, I know that I am mortal, a creature of one day. But if my mind follows the wandering path of stars, then my feet no longer rest on earth, but standing by Zeus himself, I take my fill of ambrosia, the food of the gods. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Claudius Ptolemy. Leave a comment below to share your opinion.